Staring contest, go! If I won, then hit the subscribe button. If you don't, I'm gonna freaking scare you. My name is Joshua and I want to Oh my eyes. <laughs> you see, you gotta have some a lot of practices and skills when it comes to scaring to contest. Speaking of skills and practices, there is something that you must do when it comes to grade exams. There are many important techniques and studies that students should be doing and practices when it comes to musical instruments. When it comes to skills and RPGs and musical exams, you must memorize. Because that is literally compulsory in every single grade. So, I'm gonna make a lecture about arpeggios in a separate lecture, but for today's lecture, I'm gonna be talking about scales. Now, before I talk about anything, there's different kinds of scales. So there will be lots and lots of parts when it comes to scales. So, for this lecture, it's gonna be part one. But before you watch this episode, I highly suggest you to watch episode two and three, which is an episode of what is key signatures and what is key signature part two for the minor keys. What is scale, by the way? Scale are a group of notes that are basically played in a specific order. But we all have to understand that there's different types of scales. Depending on what specific order and what specific notes that you have to play in that particular order. So I'm gonna start off with the most simplest names as possible. Dodecatonic scale, nonatonic scale, octatonic scale, heptatonic scale, hexatonic scale, pentatonic scale, tetratonic scale, tritonic scale, diatonic scale, and monotonic scale. What is it you ask? Well, let me get this a bit more clear. So, dodecatonic is a scale consisting 12 notes. Then you have a nonatonic which contains 9 notes. Then octatonic has 8 notes, and then you get the rest. In each of these scales, there are different types of patterns depending on how many tones and semitones are in a specific order. Now, tone and semitone is a specific interval between two notes. It's either the two notes that are close together or too close together. The notes that are close together are called the tones. But the other one has two notes that are too close together to the... <clears throat> you better teach them PDA, are called the semitones. Too hard to remember? Well, I'll make this easier for you. So think about this. You got yourself a circle, and if you slice the circle in half, it becomes a semicircle. Same with a tone. Think of the circle as a tone, and if you slice the tone in half, it becomes a semitone. Hmm? I'll make this even more easy. So you can get your baby right here, and if you slice the baby in half, it's called a semi-baby. People love that scene for some reason. I have absolutely no idea, but you know what? I love that scene too. But there is a specific pattern that I want you to guys to really, 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 really consider. That specific pattern is extremely common that I want you to forget about all of this for just a few minutes. I mean, you just, you don't even need to remember all of this. There is this pattern called the tetrachord. So tell me, what the heck is a tetrachord? So this is a tetrachord. Tetrachord is four notes that creates a pattern of tone, tone, semitone. Now here is an actual tetrachord, which sounds like this. Something sounds a bit missing, doesn't it? Well, because they're not going to end up with another tetrachord at the end. So generally, we need two tetrachords forming a new form of scale known as major scale. 
Now, that sounds sexy. Let's have a look at this pattern once again. We have tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. So it begins with two tones and a semitone, and then three tones, and at the end there's a semitone. Very easy to remember. Tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. As you can see, the first note and the last note is the same C, but a different octave. That's the only difference that we could possibly look at. But there's a specific name for that first and the last I won't specifically call about that. First note is called the key note. Key coming from the key signature, key note, because this key note is the one that is the basic root of this entire pattern. So, this is an example of a key note. This is a C major scale, therefore, the key note is a C. This is a D major scale, therefore, the key note is a D. This is an E flat major scale, therefore, the key note is E flat. And you know the rest. So let's revise this one more time. Major scales consist tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. And now, what is a minor scale? Well, think about this. A major scale is that a piece that has a very happy kind of music, but then later on it has a minor key. It's either sad or very angry, you know what I'm saying? Now, my babies, there are names of each of these minor scales. And let's start off with the natural minor scale. Natural minor scale is the one that is exactly the same as a major scale. Now, let me just say this one more time. So natural minor scale is exactly, exactly the same as major scale, but starting on a different note. However, the difference is the first note, aka the key note, is different compared to the major key, which the minor key note begins on a minor third lower than the major key note. By the way, that minor third interval, it has that tone distance and a semitone distance. So one tone and one semitone. So for C major, the relative minor is A minor. Why? Because we go back from, from C, B, A. A, B, tone, and B, C, semitone. So this is definitely A minor scale. So A, natural minor scale, literally starts from A to A with no black keys. So it'll be the same case for D major scale because for the dot minor third lower from the D, it's gonna be B. So D, C, B, that's the third. B, C, semitone, and C, D, tone. So generally this forms a minor third. So D major, relative minor, is B minor scale. Now here's another example. E major scale consists of F, C, G, but E major scale is a little bit of a funny situation because if you go from E, D, C, which is a third distance, that doesn't look like a minor third, doesn't it? Yeah, because there's no semitones. So, you know, what the shit? But that's okay, we have a solution for this kind of an issue because we can change the note that is a minor third lower into a flat or sharp. But for this case, we're gonna sharpen the C, which becomes C sharp minor. Now we're done with the natural minor scale. So now we're gonna look at harmonic minor scale. This baby is going to be harmonic. Now harmonic minor scale is exactly the same as natural minor scale, but the seventh note is sharpened. But do you see how sexy that sounds? Uh, the natural minor scale has tone semitone, tone tone semitone, tone tone. But the harmonic minor scale has tone semitone, tone tone semitone, minor third, then semitone. Why so complicated? This is the reason why. When we listen to major scale, always the ending has that semitone at the end, doesn't it? But the natural minor scale doesn't have that semitone. So the harmonic minor scale does have that real ending. And the major scale have also have that real ending, but the natural minor scale does not have that real ending. Which is why the semitone creates that real leading note roll here that creates an actual finish. So the pattern is really clear. I mean, really damn clear. They want you to raise the seventh semitone higher in the harmonic minor scale. Finally, a melodic minor scale. Melodic minor scale is a mixed version of major scale and natural minor scale. Huh? 
How does that work? Well, let me give you a bit of a detail here. So the harmonic minor scale has a seventh note sharpened, as I said before, because it creates the real ending. However, the melodic minor scale kind of borrows that A major scale thing at the end. Not the C major, A major. A minor and A major. Because the beginning of the A melodic minor scale still begins with the A minor scale. However, it ends with an A major scale pattern. Therefore, the 6th and the 7th notes are sharp. What the shit? But that's not all. The ascending and descending is gonna be completely different. Because the descending is exactly the same as the natural minor scale. So together, it sounds like this. So you can take a screenshot. Whoa, 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 wait, don't take a screenshot yet. Don't take a screenshot yet. Hey, hang on. Uh, um. All right, now, you can take a screenshot right now and say cheese. I mean, I'm saying cheese, cheese. Chromatic scale is a scale with only semitones. And a whole tone scale is a scale with only tones. That's it. Wait, where do you think you're going? I'm not finished yet, there's more information that I have to talk about. First of all, do you remember me talking about these weird names before? Yeah, the first one, dodecatonic scale. This is a scale that consists 12 notes, right? This chromatic scale is a scale that consists 12 notes. So basically, it uses every single note on that keyboard. Okay, so let me show you of an excerpt where it contains chromatic scales. I'm gonna explain to you more detail about chromatic scale in later lectures, especially when it comes to 8-tone note music or 12-tone pieces, like the pieces by Arnold Schoenberg. Now, whole tone scale. Whole tone scale is one of the scales that is part of a hexatonic scale, aka scale with six notes. So this is what a whole tone scale sounds like. Here's an example of a piece that uses whole tone scales. Chromatic is a scale with only seven tones, and whole tone scale is a scale with only tones. There you go. Now, take another screenshot. In the future lectures, I'm going to be talking about jazz scales, like the blues scales, non-atonic scale, octatonic scale, or some other crap like that. And of course, I got some, uh, um, these scales. So we got some Ionian scale, Dorian scale, Phrygian scale, Lydian scale, Mixolydian scale, Aeolian scale. Wait, th these are basically modal scales. What the heck is a Hyperdorian, Hyperphry? Is this freaking Digimon evolution? Well, anyways, you get the idea. This is just basically gonna be everything, huh? Do you agree with my lecture? If you disagree or if you have any other topics that you want me to talk about, leave a comment down below. And I'll see you in the next lecture. My name is Joshua Wan Pagim, and as always, take care. Bye bye!